wife Rebecca, the First Lady and I, welcome your excellencies once again to Pesdiasi Lodge, the President's retreat in the Abri Hills. And to this annual event, opportunity to exchange greetings, interact with each other, and affirm our shared commitment and dedication to strengthening the existing bonds of friendship, cooperation, goodwill, and solidarity between our country and your respective countries and organizations. For some of you, this gathering happens to be your very first. I congratulate you once again on your appointment, and I hope your stay in Ghana throughout the course of your posting will be both enjoyable and mutually beneficial for our countries and peoples. I must at the outset express my appreciation to the dynamic dean of the diplomatic corps, His Excellency Maha Kaya, ambassador of the Republic of Lebanon to the Republic of Ghana for the message he expressed on behalf of the Corps. With less than a year to the end of my mandate, I continue to look forward to continued cordial and fruitful relations with you, which I'm certain will help to continue to create and spread prosperity and opportunities for all. This event remains a testament to the very rich and fruitful relations Ghana enjoys in the Committee of Nations, as well as our commitment to maintaining strong bonds of friendship and partnership. Long may it continue. Excellences, we've assembled here today at a time of continuing global economic uncertainties, occasioned by tight financing conditions climate change, the Russia-Ukraine war, the Israel-Hamas conflict, and political instability in several parts of the world, particularly in West Africa. These rising geopolitical and economic tensions have affected adversely the economic fortunes of developing countries, including Ghana, posing major threats to the attainment of global, continental, and regional development goals agreed on by the international community in the areas of peace and security, development cooperation, human and food security, and climate change. Despite the difficult economic conditions, some countries like Ghana, through the adoption of prudent fiscal and monetary measures, have demonstrated resilience resulting in the resurgence of their economies. The nation's post-COVID-19 program for economic growth, supported by the three-year, three billion United States dollars IMF extended credit facility, is helping to propel the economy to higher rates of growth. Notwithstanding the complexities that define the global landscape, we are confident and optimistic about the future. The macroeconomic environment is already showing strong signs of stability and recovery, underlying the significant potential of structural reforms and sustainable industrialization. Since the inception of the program, Ghana has remained committed to restoring macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability, which will lay the foundations for stronger and inclusive growth with focus on entrepreneurship, job creation, and protecting the vulnerable and the poor. In order to consolidate the gains achieved so far, priorities for 2024 include macroeconomic stabilization, fiscal consolidation, aggressive domestic revenue mobilization, expenditure rationalization, structural reforms and social protection, completion of the debt restructuring program, implementation of the growth strategy with a focus on value addition, export promotion, domestic and foreign investments, agriculture, industry, tourism, textile and gardens, 
and digitalization. Leveraging climate financing for green growth. Completing of ongoing infrastructure for poverty eradication projects rather than the initiation of new ones. Construction of road infrastructure, rural electrification, and expanding telephony. Intensification and implementation of educational reforms. Completing the issuance of Ghana cards and the promotion of peace and security with particular emphasis on the peaceful conduct of the 2024 general election. Bilateral cooperation between Ghana and your various respective countries have resulted in several positive economic outcomes on issues such as development finance, trade and investment, science, technology and innovation, transport and migration, and education. We're particularly grateful for the support received from your governments towards Ghana's sustained socioeconomic development in several sectors of our economy, not least in education, culture, agriculture, health, science and technology, banking and finance, human resource development, defense and security, water management, sanitation, women empowerment, environmental protection, small medium enterprises development and entrepreneurship, and renewable energy. Excellencies, I want to extend the appreciation of the Ghanaian people and their government to your governments and peoples for their support during Ghana's two-year tenure as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, which came to an end on 31st December 2023. Through collaborative efforts, Ghana was able to bring to global attention issues concerning peace and security in the West African region, and support for regional in initiatives such as the Accra Initiative. Ghana is also happy that she managed to play a leading and very active role in mobilizing consensual support for the UN Security Council Resolution number 2719 of 2023 on financing Africa Union peace support operations, which has now put the vexed issue of the financing of African peacekeeping operations on a more stable and predictable basis. Over the course of the next two years, Ghana looks forward to working closely with your governments on the United Nations Human Rights Council, to which she was elected with 179 votes in third place in the African bloc, three votes behind first place Malawi, to address key global issues that affect our socioeconomic development, including the empowerment and protection of women and children and the promotion of economic development. With the hosting of the Secretariat of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, CVF in Accra, which groups together 58 of the, of the most climate vulnerable countries with a combined population of 1.4 billion people. Ghana will once again be at the forefront of advocating for global support for vulnerable countries in dealing with the ravages of climate change. And we count on your support. As you may know, my very able, hard-working Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, the Honorable Shelley Ayoko Buche, is in the race for the position of the Secretary General of the Commonwealth on the completion of the mandate in October of the current Secretary General, Baroness Patricia Scotland KC. I believe you share our view that she's eminently qualified for the position. The Commonwealth is an organization formed to champion the values of democracy, good governance, and equitable and inclusive development amongst Commonwealth member states, values she will strongly promote. We will count on the gracious support of all esteemed member states of the Commonwealth 
for her election in October at the impending Shogun Summit in Samoa, which is intended to help revitalize the organization and strengthen multilateralism and strategic alliances at the global level. Excellencies, the political situation in the West African region and its associated security challenges of, of terrorism and violent extremism are matters of global concern. In view of recent developments within the region, Ghana as an active member of ECOWAS will collaborate with other members' countries to safeguard democratic governance, peace, and security, as well as to fulfill the aspirations of its citizens for regional economic integration. We're optimistic that through shared values and consensus building, ECOWAS will overcome its current difficulties and experience peace, unity, and economic advancement. Within the context of Africa's interests and the objectives of AU Agenda 2063, we desire collectively a peaceful and secure Africa grounded on the principles of democracy, good governance, respect for human rights, peace, and security, and people-driven dri development, particularly for women and the youth. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, with its secretariat located in Accra, is the framework through which we can achieve economic integration for the African continent. The participation of Ghana and seven other countries in the Guided Trade Initiative will stimulate intra-African trade, amplify our competitive advantage, and solidify our status within the global market. This has enabled us to make significant inroads into the East African market, notably into Kenya and Tanzania. Over 700 AFCFTA certified products from Ghana, such as cosmetics, processed foods, beverages, coconut oil, shea butter, and garments have been targeted at the AFCFTA market under the Guided Trade Initiative. The diaspora engagement policy, which was recently launched at Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency, seeks to harness human and material resources of the African diaspora for the socioeconomic transformation of Ghana and Africa. The government in this regard will pursue strategic partnerships with countries and international organizations in areas of investments, skills and knowledge transfer to enhance international trade. I want to re-emphasize the need for collaborative solutions to global challenges for the mutual benefit of our countries and for the successful settlement of the reparations issue, which has now become an important item on the AU-led African agenda in which Ghana is playing a frontline role. Your Excellencies, I'm aware that last week's bipartisan passage by Parliament of the proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill on a private member's motion has raised considerable anxieties in certain quarters of the diplomatic community and among some friends of Ghana that she may be turning her back on her hitherto enviable, long-standing record on human rights observance and attachment to the rule of law. I want to assure you that no such backsliding will be complete, contemplated or occasioned. I think it will serve little purpose to go at this stage into the details of the origin of this proposed law, which is yet to reach my desk. But suffice it to say that I have learned that today a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. In the circumstances, it would be as well for all of us to hold our hands and await the decision of the court before any action is taken. The operation of the institutions of the Ghanaian state 
will determine the future trajectory of the rule of law and human rights compliance in our country. Excellencies, as you all know, this year is an election year. On 7th December, the Ghanaian people will elect a new president and a new parliament. The term of the present parliament expires at the end of the year, and I'm in the last year of the permissible eight years that a citizen can exercise the functions of president. The Akufu Alu led government is clear about its obligation and duty to ensure that the impending elections are conducted in an atmosphere of peace and security, in full transparency and respect for the electoral laws of our country. I am confident that the security agencies will be alive to their responsibilities. I will ensure that the free will of the Ghanaian people in their choice of national leadership will be manifest. We cherish our reputation as a beacon of democracy on the African continent, and the forthcoming elections will reinforce this reputation. Excellencies, I want to state in conclusion, that in all modesty, I am exceedingly, exceedingly proud of my record in office and the considerable achievements that have been recorded in all sectors of national life these last seven years, several of which have been very difficult as a result of global developments. Whether it is in the management of the national economy, in education, health care, roads development, railways development, digitalization, infrastructural development in general, agricultural and industrial transformation, the protection of Ghana's territorial integrity and security, the fight against corruption, the battle against environmental degradation, the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, entrenching the tenets of good governance and the rule of law, contributing to the attainment of regional and continental integration and unity, being at the forefront of the growing demand for the reform of global governance institutions, or in upholding respect for international law and multilateralism, the record is there for all to see. And I believe it is one which in all humanity is at the least the equal for any in the history of the Fourth Republic. I can say in all good conscience that I have not betrayed the mandates the good people of Ghana conferred on me. All of this has been done in part due to the support I have received from all of you and your respective governments and organizations, to you and to whom I express my sincere gratitude. I pray that you continue with the same level of cooperation with my successor. The First Lady, my beautiful Rebecca. My equally beautiful children and grandchildren. And my family, join me in wishing you and your families well. And above all, success in your duties as accredited representatives of your countries and international organizations to the Republic of Ghana. May I respectfully ask you to be upstanding and to join me in raising your glasses. You don't have any, I know, but I'll drink it to all of you. To toast the prosperity and good health of your leaders, your countries, your families, and our continued cooperation and friendship this new year. Happy New Year. And may God bless us all. I thank you for your attention.